Welcome to the video, Mick here, hello. Um, just gonna put these three very simple pedals on this pedal board. Uh, in the previous video that we did on this, Dan helped me choose an overdrive and a delay, sort of fairly exhaustive video going through loads and loads of pedals. <laughs> um, so today I'm gonna stick it on a board and do all of that. Uh, never gonna moan about it being sunny but the uh, exposure today is hilarious. We've got a bit of natural light going on, which I'm so happy about. But uh, anyway, if it goes bright and dark, don't blame me, blame the sun. Gonna try and get it on this uh, Daddario Expand pedal board, which is uh, a very neat little design. Here we go then. Assembly instructions, good. Oh God, this looks complicated. Ends. I guess when doing anything like this, it's probably a good idea to grab everything you need and have it close to hand. So for me, that would be cutting devices, um, screwing devices, uh, Allen keys, a whole bunch of power gubbins, patch cables and stuff like that. Now, probably fair to say that Dan's um, gig rig power supply, the modular power supply is probably overkill for this little tiny board, but it's what I have. Um, I've got all the bits, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, you'd be equally well served with a, just a simple power brick from any of the major suppliers. But that's nice. So on the expand, expand, see, expand pedal board, um, they come with, soft side velcro on the bottom. That's nice, already done, happy days. So I'm guessing two rails, one that has a logo, one that doesn't, so I'm gonna think they probably go like that. I suppose using the instructions wouldn't hurt, would it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They so give you an Allen key. small bit of faffation, but I think that more than is made up for by the modular nature of this. I really like this design actually. Trying screwing things in with my left hand. Before I go too much further, I want to know if there's enough depth on here for the pedals, right? So the clockwork is quite deep as you can see. So what I don't really want is a load of goobin hanging out the back here. Sorry, that's not French for gubbins. Um, where there's loads of uh, jacks and stuff protruding off the end of the, of the board. I don't really want that. And I think we're right on the edge there for that. Let's have a look at this. I appreciate it's a bit of a Daddario love-in today, but um, they were good enough to send us the board, so I'm gonna use it. There you go, that fits quite nicely. And then that on there, just about. But remember, it is expandable if I need to. Nice, nice and neat. Okay, so that would be the first sort of stage of any pedal board build, big or small. Just stick the pedals on and make sure they're gonna fit. So this end has got some screws in, which it's a flush fit, so I'm gonna take them out. It doesn't say to take them out, but I'm gonna take them out because it'll do my head in if the fit's not flush. Maybe we'll regret this in time. It's kind of interesting. I've wondered why there's not a modular pedal board designed before. Dan and I talked about it actually, and then when we saw this come out, we were like, oh, not quick enough. <laughs> but, um, and I'm, I'm sure there have been ones before. This seems like a really great solution, and I promise it's not an ad for it, but um, it just seems like a good design. Um, although I do, I, <laughs> it's quite funny, a lot of people just aren't very practical, and the, the thought of sending something out into the world 
that needs self-assembly. IKEA have got that <laughs> nailed down. I wonder what Daddario's customer helpline has been like. I mean, you know, it is super simple, but there is uh, no accounting for humans' inability to follow simple instructions, which is probably what I'm about to do. Anyway, um, almost there. Nicely machined aluminium bits. Um, fairly solid feeling steel Allen bolts, so feels robust enough for the kind of thing most of us are doing most of the time. The Labrador's going for it today. Regular viewers will know all about the Labrador. Cool. Tight enough for the time being. So the next thing that you do uh, if you're putting a simple board together is just make sure if you do have to fit anything underneath, it's going to fit. Now, I'm going to need to fit a couple of high current adapters. In fact, one high current adapter. So there's going to be a bunch of these things that need to go on the bottom. As I said before, if you're approaching this from scratch and you're not already invested in a power system, you're probably better off with just a simple power brick. But again, I'm not entirely sure there's enough room under there for something like an MXR power brick. So just be careful what you choose. If you want to put it underneath, you need to make sure it's going to fit. Um, that's okay. We've got good clearance on all of that, given that we've got feet there. So that's no problem. I know that that's going to fit. T. Cheers. So the end section screws into there with more of these bolts. And then presumably these things here release it so that it can come out. Four holes left, four screws left. Winning. Good vibe. It needs to expand a bit before I can do it. Totally winning. How neat is that? That's really cool. Right, so there we are. Um, so you can, as you can see, very good, and these things just lock it in place. Nice. Adjustable feet on the bottom. Adjustable feet. Let's just do them all down. It should be a flat surface. Okay. So, as we said, what's going to fit on here then? So the first pedal is going to be this, the dual drive. I'll just butt that right up to the edge. Now, so when you're putting, to, putting a board together, you're going to have, you've got essentially four edges to think about. I like it so that nothing extends beyond the, the extremities of the board itself. So if you put it in a bag or something, you don't knock the jacks as you stick it in the bag. As it happens, these don't come with bags. Maybe it's an optional accessory. I don't know. Because the dual drive's got no jacks on the end, I can butt it up to the end of the board there and also to the front side of the board with no risk of any it catching on anything. And I'll just do it inside the aluminium housing so that it sits there nicely. It's also worth thinking about what you've got to step on in the course of your show or whatever it is you're doing. So one of the things that I've got to step on in this, well, I'm going to have to step on all of it, probably. These two channel switches, this is the kind of essentially the always on side and this will be the solo extra gain side. Now, one control I need to get to on the clockwork is the tap tempo. So if I put my tap tempo too close to that channel switch, the chances are when I'm, because I'm singing as well, so I'm going to be singing into the mic, maybe tapping the tempo in on the delay pedal and I'm going to hit that channel switch. So I want some space in between those two in order that my foot can can deal with that. There is a, I mean, there is an argument to say that maybe I should put this one first so that uh, I'm definitely not going to do that because it will be well out of the way. However, I think what I can do is I can just put enough space between them in order for that to happen. Now, I'm going to get this tuner on there as well, wherever that's gone. And somewhat annoyingly, that has got the heat switch right in the same place. However, and of course, if I hit that, partway through my performance, it's going to mute because <laughs> that's the purpose of the tuner. A lot of people would have the tuner first, especially if it has a buffer in it, but 
Um, I don't really want my any buffers before my uh, overdrive pedal, so I'll probably put it in the middle. The other benefit of having it in the middle is if you go to tune mid-set and your overdrive pedal's still on, if the tuner is first in line, all the noise that's coming from your overdrive pedal will still go downstream and still come out of your amp if there's a bit of hiss if you're using lots of gain, for example. If you stick your tuner after your overdrive pedal, when you turn it, uh, activate the tuner and you get the mute, it'll also mute everything that's happening before the tuner, so you'll get rid of all that hiss as well. Not applicable to everybody, but applicable to some people, so I'll mention it there. So if I stick that on there, that'll be fine. Now, of course, the annoying thing is the clockwork is now going to sit across the join here, which I don't want. Even though it will sit there fine, there's about, a, I don't know, a three or four millimeter drop between the two sections. So I think the thing to do, we'll have the tuner last on the extension. We'll put the clockwork there with plenty of room so that I can get to the tap tempo without turning that on and off. Tuners on the extension, plenty of room for everything. That feels like a nice um, logical spacing for me. Okay, attaching pedals to the board. We've done this metal many times, but let's do it again. Dan and I like to have the soft side of the Velcro on the board itself. Thankfully, this one already came with it attached. And we use something called, which people refer to as pedal board tape, it's actually 3M dual lock and it works in both directions. So it doesn't have a soft side and a hard side like Velcro does, it's a dual lock system and it is super strong. You can use it on both sides of the board if that would help, uh, if, you, if it needs to be really, really robust. We find that what actually works a bit better, or at least works better for us, is to attach a small amount of dual lock onto the back of the pedal and then just stick that to the uh, soft side Velcro. We'll check. I know that it sticks because there's some on the clockwork already. And the good news is you don't need very much of this, right? So um, Dan tends to cut little triangles. So he'll cut a square off. Not exactly a square, but it doesn't matter. And then cut across there. And then you can stick that on each corner of your pedal, like that. I've just got to pretend they're straight lines and that keep me happy. <laughs> the benefit of coating the whole of the base layer of your pedal board in soft side Velcro is that you can then stick your pedals anywhere on it so you don't have to worry that it's going to line up. And as I say, this stuff is really, really good so you don't need to use too much of it, which is good news because it is expensive. But again, once it's on your pedals, it'll stay on there pretty much. So you don't need to be continually applying and reapplying. The benefit of putting a small amount on the bottom of the pedal there is that it's relatively easy to get on and off. I usually have a butter knife handy for that purpose. <laughs> so we'll just stick that, as I said, There's a kind of an aluminium fascia on the front of the board and there's one on the side and I've just put it onto the inside of those two extremities just to give, I don't know, whatever it is, three or four millimeters of space inside the board all around. You could put it right up to the edge if you wanted. And that gives me enough space to put my jacks in back here. Um, with the clockwork, butter knife required here, here's how this works. Separate the Velcro from the thing. So I'm going to stick that, let's say there, just to give me plenty of room for that tap tempo. Of course you could butt it all up together so it's much more space efficient, but I just want to make sure when I'm tapping that tempo I don't turn this on and off. Obviously if you're using a pedal switcher like we would most of the time, um, that's not going to be a problem because uh, you wouldn't be accessing much of the pedal itself, you'd be doing it all from the switcher. If you were really worried about it, you could run an external tap tempo button, so you'd have it miles away. And then this, right, what covering have we got on here? Sometimes on the backs of pedals, you'll find a rubbery coating. Tube screamers, some boss pedals, in fact, most boss pedals. <laughs> I think the earlier version of this, and it's a nightmare to stick things to. This one feels like that's not gonna be a problem, so 
We'll just do the same thing with our jewel look. Actually, with this one, I'm going to cut some long bits. Cut it in half that way. That should be enough. I'm going to place it under the screws because if I do need to get into that pedal for whatever reason, maybe the buffer turns off in inside the pedal, I don't know. I want the screws accessible. Again, that'll be enough to hold that on there. That'll be nice and strong. So we'll do that. Now, for the output, I don't have to worry about it, any jack coming out the end of that, because that's going to go off to my amp, so I don't need to worry about it not being uh, too close to the edge. Good firm, push down, little wiggle, left to right, up and down, just to seat it on there. And that... Bit like the uh, meringue over the head test in cooking, that's not coming off there. We would normally do power first, um, because that's once it's in there you're not going to move that, you might move your audio. So I get something soft to put underneath the board. So underneath here, I've, unfortunately I've got three little things to put on. Um, as I say, this might be overkill for this little board, but it's going on there anyway. So I need what's called a distributor, that will take the power out of the wall. I need an isolator, which is going to send the power to the tuner and the overdrive. Oh, actually, it's at this point you want to check the current draw of your pedals, because uh, that will tell you what power you need. Now, I know the overdrive needs next to nothing, less than 120, um, much less than 120, most overdrives typically a lot less than that. This one might have a uh, like a voltage charge pump in it, so it could be up to, I think there might be as much as 90, but I doubt it. Um, the J-Rocket uh, clockwork is analog, so it shouldn't take that much power consumption, and the tuner shouldn't take that much either. So let's have a look. That's slightly annoying. Um, I can't win any published current draw specs. I found 100 milliamps on one source, and J-Rocket say just use a normal 9-volt um, power adapter because it's got an internal charge pump which puts it up to 24 volts internally. So we're going to assume it doesn't need high current any more than 100 and 120 milliamps, which is good news because that means uh, I need a distributor which takes the power from the wall and I need an isolator, which is going to send the power off to each of the three pedals and keep it all completely clean. So there's no crosstalk, uh, everything's isolated, there'll be no noise uh, from the three pedals. One thing to think about, no matter what power supply you're using, um, is to make sure that if there's, you've got to plug something into it, like an IEC cable for the mains or another cable, that that junction is accessible. So for example, on the distributor, I need to be able to plug something in here. So I need that to be accessible to the board, i.e. I don't want to mount it, you know, like that, because then I won't be able to get the lead in. Uh, similarly, it's worth thinking about, you know, when you're stood there and it's in front of you, where do you want your cables coming from? You know, if it's a pain to have them coming from one direction, then don't do that. That's going to change on where you stand on stage, where you put your mic stand, all that stuff. So just put it somewhere that makes sense to you. Secondly, uh, if you've got other stuff like this, it's got to go somewhere where the leads can reach. One of the nice things about the Gig Rig Modular Supply is that's all customizable. So you can put in the leads, get it exactly right uh, to your liking. Right. I'm going to put that there. I'll keep this short lead to plug into the isolator. Or maybe I won't. I'll keep one that's slightly longer <laughs> so that it'll actually reach. Don't need don't need these additional leads so they can come out. Uh, I should also just say that the thing that powers all of this is a separate little adapter that will sit off somewhere. Um, I don't think I can get that on the bottom of here without it fouling the ground. So I also like to keep it away uh, off the board, especially on small boards, because it can... Um, it, it's 
putting out quite a lot of current up to five amps and that can be noisy with some pedals so um, depends where you put it The way this particular system works is you just push the wires in, they just snap that into place and make the connections. Some people say it's a bit of a faff, I like the way that you can just make it to the right length and uh, depending on if you're always messing about with your pedal board, it's modular so you can just chop and change as you like. Sorry, that was slightly hilarious. Um, <laughs> one of the, uh, oh, there it is, there's the bit of skin. <laughs> um, what, that's nice. One of the, one of the perils of uh, trying to lean a mile away and be underneath the camera is you might cut a bit of your finger off with scissors. <laughs> so um, sticking blasters at the handy. Uh, <laughs> sorry for anyone who's a bit squeamish. Sorry, that was probably hilarious. Uh, right, um, <laughs> what an idiot, what an idiot. Okay, uh, let's get back to business. Things not to do before a gig, mess around with sharp objects where danger of cutting guitar fingers is high. What's everyone's favorite guitar related injury then? I uh, dropped uh, a KSG copy on my foot when I was about 10 years old and the nail on said toe is still deformed. There we are powered up. What I would do at this stage is just check that each of those leads is working. So as I said, there is an additional device, the generator, which is the actual power supply. What should happen now is this should all work. No, okay. Might be, sometimes pedals need a jack. So there we go, my powers are working, I know that. Final thing to say on the power, I'll just reiterate, you know, if you've got an ordinary brick type nine volt supply, that would be fine, totally fine for a little board like this, um, assuming that it's got enough current to power everything. Where Dan system comes into its own is if you've got problematic pedals, 24 volts, uh, high current stuff, if you've got a lot of Strymon pedals, you know, stuff that requires different um, current draws, voltages, polarities and all that, um, a modular supply can be more useful to you over time. I don't know about you, but I've gone probably gone through seven or eight power bricks in my life buying one finding out that it won't do 500 milliamps from four sockets effectively, blah, blah, blah. So you trade up, trade up, trade up. So that can be the um, advantage of, of the Gigwig power supply. But yeah, it is a faff. It can be a faff for a tiny board like this and may well be overkill. So that's up to you. Get get whatever you think works. Um, good. Audio. Right. Um, we usually use... Certainly Dan on his pro builds will use the um, screw-in solderless patch cables from Evidence Audio. There's a lot of talk about whether solderless patch cables are as good as soldered ones. And I think we're all agreed that ultimately a brilliantly soldered cable is the right way to go. But not all of us have the soldering skills and not all solderless patch cables are the same. The evidence ones are exceptional because that core wire screws into the end of the jack. It's really, really robust if you make them well. I don't always make them well. <laughs> I need a couple of really short ones here, so I'm gonna use ready-made ones. I've had these Providence ones for years and years and years. Uh, they're purple, which is cool.
patch cable. What do we do with all this? Do we bend it down there out the way? And what I was talking about earlier, where the edge of the patch cable goes further than the edge of the board, that's happening there. So not really ideal, but we'll live with it. I think I can deal with that. I'm not sure if it's the left out or the right out. <laughs> one of them will be mono, one will be the mono one, so we'll work that out as we go. There's enough length on that patch cable to plug into either, so I don't have to worry. So that'll work. Guitar in there, out to the amp there, boom, done. Here we go then. All right, I'm already a bit grumpy. Uh, as you can see, things have changed. I um, plugged it all in just to test if it was working. I tested the power was working in there when I wired it all up. But straight off the bat, the clockwork uh, wasn't getting any signal through it, So, and the tap tempo wasn't working, so it's like, okay, it wasn't getting enough current after all. Uh, so I put it on a Time Lord, Dan's uh, high current adapter, which should give it up to 500 milliamps should be more than enough. I mean, you know, Strymon pedals, big digital Strymon pedals run on that. So, and then about, I don't know, 30 seconds into testing it, it just stopped working. So, um, sorry, J rocket, sorry, Chris, but there's something I've misunderstood about the power there, but that's not that on the head for me. I can't, if I don't know what's going on, I don't know how to fix it. So <laughs> belly pop deluxe, <laughs> which is, you know, there we are. <laughs> that's how sometimes how things go. So let's just see that it's all working. Certainly sounding pretty sweet. One of the things about the Bell Epoch Deluxe is it doesn't have tap tempo, or at least it, it does, except I don't want to add the tap tempo switch. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll put a bit of tape on where my short and long <laughs> delay times are, um, which looks fairly simple. Slap back looks to be at nine o'clock.
Near enough. Um, and I think my long delay is pretty much straight up. It's going to be totally fine. Um, tuner works anyway. Nice big display. Dan really likes the strobe ones. I can't. Something about the way my brain processes inf information. I can't decide whether it's sharp or flat when it's going left or right. Duelist it is. <laughs> After all that. Um, familiarity, tube screamery, it's got the glass if I need it, if, if it's just not cutting enough. And there's all the gain in the world by the other side. There you go. Um, <laughs> so the two pedals I said I was going to use have ended up as two completely different ones. Well, hello, it's gig day. Uh, I've come to the office to get all my gear. Got it in the back of the car here. There we go, very nice cab head. There's the pedals, everything's changed again. In this little wallet here, I've actually put, well I can't open it, but there's a spare power supply in there in case anything goes down. All good. Uh, I've got my, all the cables that I need and my power supply, and I've got my iPad holder for my words, so that can all go in there. Uh, I'll pack that in neatly in a minute, try to get it in as small a thing as possible because there's a bit of a carry from the car. And I just thought, you know what? 
emergency tube screamer with fresh battery in case of colossal pedal board failure. Um, there it is. Uh, so yeah, that's me. Ready to go. Here we are then at the business end. Uh, here's Nev's rig. Three guitars. There's his pedal board. <laughs> There's the guys. Jim's got a proper guitar. I'm making a video with Neville, Jim, so uh, please excuse me. But check that out. I cannot wait to hear that. Oh my God. This is Rich. I love it. <laughs> you recognize him from Guitarist too? There's the man of the moment down there. Nice day in here at Comedia in Bath. The house will be rocking soon enough. with his friend Dan, who's also in tonight, Dan Steinberg. Yeah. That pedal show. Yeah. Um, Dan's in, and the other guy, let me introduce you to the wonderful Mick Taylor. Yeah.
Well, well, well. So after all that, <laughs> um, first off, massive congratulations to uh, Neville and Adrian who organised that show. They both released albums. They both put on a show, playing the whole of their records. Um, and it's a really big deal, you know, after everything that's happened over the last few years with COVID. And um, just in general, just putting it out there, making a record, doing a gig. Massive congrats. It was a really, really great show. Um, I'm not going to apologise for the quality of the iPhone video and audio. <laughs> I promise it sounded better in the room, so we'll just move on. But it was a really great night. It was a coming together of um, of humans, of people in a space making music together, um, albeit everyone a little bit nervous because it wasn't like massively rehearsed or anything like that. No excuses. Humans coming together, making a noise for an audience, and it was a big success. So thanks so much to those guys for doing it and for asking me to play which all sort of knocks the rest of it into a cocked hat a little bit because all this obsessing about tone and everything, does it matter? As you saw right at the end, I'll give you a demo of the <laughs> how the pedal board actually panned out. And I even changed the pickups in the guitar and there's a new, <laughs> uh, there'll be a vlog coming on that soon where I get into what I'm touching on here in a bit more depth, the psychology of all of this, the philosophy of it, the endless obsessing over detail and tone when actually in the moment there when you are playing and trying to summon some sort of connection with the instrument the band and the audience you know none of it matters anymore doesn't mean that doing the pre-work isn't important anyway so yeah it all went great it was fantastic to play actually it was really inspiring to play for what it's worth Dan and I sometimes talk about the fact that we're sat here on stools all the time and as brilliant as it is to explore tones and get get into it and read the comments and do all of that, sometimes the balance gets a little bit out of kilter with, you know, actually getting out and playing. Even if it is only two songs at a mate's gig, it's all playing and it's all worthwhile and it's all, I guess, if you've done any amount of that in your life, you soon miss it when you're not doing it. But we'll talk about that in the future. Hopefully the pedal board building part of this uh video was interesting to those of you who haven't done that before and uh, to fans of the show hopefully the rest of it will be familiar tps territory okay i'll give you a listen to these last two pedals why did i change them at the last minute i don't know why i changed the duelist uh it was sounding so great i think i was a little bit worried i'd be too tempted to use too much gain so i wanted something with a bit less gain i was worried that i'd step on everything and have too much gain and i know that when i do that it there's an audibility problem not least when you try and play a fast run of a solo and sort of fluff it. Anyway, uh, not, no moaning. The delay I changed because as much as I love the BED, the Belly Pop Deluxe, the way it darkens off the tone is just a, is a wonderful enveloping thing and it's really lovely, but I just, I always worry about clarity in a gig situation. So Free The Tone went on there. I can um, adjust the low and high pass filters exactly to my liking and also the modulation exactly to my liking. The sounds that I dialed into it were a slapback, which is this, so. I used that on the rock and roll song at the end, which didn't get videoed. Uh, secondly, a like a do-it-all delay with a bit of modulation. fairly clear sounding um and then the overdrive I, I just don't know why i put this on there um other than the gain thing and wanting to keep it simple one thing dan did say which was a uh, which was very nice of him to say is that during the couple songs three songs that played on he felt that the dynamic of the guitar sound worked with the dynamic of the band so even though it was just a simple setup of uh you know one overdrive pedal it went from kind of clean into medium into higher gain off the guitar 
in an in a natural way but whatever that means okay <laughs> certainly feels nice under the fingers um i get what do we say about that the subtleties in those overdrive tones in a live mix maybe you completely lose what it gives me anyway and whoever else is playing the guitar is just a comfort blanket and i think really that's what it's about it's about feeling comfortable in your brain so that your brain is free to be involved in the moment so you stop worrying about everything else Anyway, there we go. Long video, small board, short gig. <laughs> Until next time, pickups. Uh, I'm not telling you what these are, but they're new and different than what was in there before. Vlog upcoming. Okay, see you soon. Bye.